Well, hi there. Welcome back to Return to Yehovah. Return to the Lord God. I thought about uh, today that I wanted to share just some ideas. If you've been hearing people talk about keeping the Torah or or doing the Torah, keeping God's commandments, I realize that's really foreign to someone that's been a Christian for years or you know, gone to churches and never heard this kind of thing. But let me just tell you a few things that I thought of. In fact, I made a list. I don't have a way to show it to you right now, but just some ideas. It's not the be-all and end-all, but some ideas of how you as a person can start out from scratch to keep God's commandments or to keep the Torah. Now, again, for those that haven't heard this before, the Torah is the first five books of Moses. And I can't stress enough how they are the foundation of the entire Bible. One of the biggest deceptions or the biggest tricks that the enemy has played on all of Christian, all of Christianity has totally convinced people in the Christian world that we don't even need to pay attention to those first five books other than their little uh, stories, nice stories that were there for us to learn from. But it turns out all through the pages, there's all the different pieces, especially in the book of Exodus through Leviticus, Numbers, and then repeated again in Deuteronomy, all the commandments are pretty much spelled out for you. And before you think, oh my gosh, you know, commandments, it sounds like religious, uh, just religious hoops you got to jump through or something like that. It is the farthest thing from it. If you recall, Yeshua said multiple times in the New Testament that all the law and the prophets hang on two things. The first one he calls the greatest commandment is to love Yehovah your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two hangs all the law, the Torah, and the prophets, which is the rest of the Old Testament, or some would call it the Hebrew Bible. Some call it the Tanakh. Hopefully you're starting to get familiar with these terms from other people. If not, think of it as the Old Testament. But I, again, the foundation is the Torah, those first five books. As you start to read that and just, you know, take it for what it says, even in your English Bible, whatever variation you have or version you have, I've just made a brief list of some things that I would say, this is what I would start to do if I were you. And, the, you know, just to get going, to begin obeying God. Think of it that way. God tells us to hear and obey. All right, so he wants us to hear his words and obey them. Now, it doesn't mean you have to wait till God speaks to you out of the clouds. He's already done that back at Mount Sinai, and he gave through Moses all the commandments that he wants us to follow. So first, I would say, to me, first and foremost, is to keep the Sabbath. This is, now, we're not part, I'm not part of any uh, denomination. I'm not Seventh-day Adventist. I'm not part of some new group or cult or anything like that. It's just a move that God has done to wake people up all over the world that the Sabbath matters and it is not what the Christian church has been doing. All right. Sunday morning is not, or nothing about Sunday is the Sabbath. The true Sabbath that God still expects us to follow according to his word is from when the sun goes down on a Friday night, any Friday night, of course, to when the sun goes down on Saturday. So you can call that all day Saturday. If you look into the book of uh, Genesis, when it, it gives the story of creation, God describes each day. He says, it was evening and morning the first day. It was evening and morning the second day, and so on. And uh, so that, that kind of goes along with the idea that the day begins when the sun goes down. Now, most of us think just the opposite. And in our uh, the world we live in now, I mean, here I'm living in America in 2014, and yes, that's contrary to what we normally think, but imagine God looks at it as like the day we're in right now, it's still light out right now, but when the sun goes down, that's the end of this day, and it's the beginning of the next day, okay? So, the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, begins at sundown on Friday night, and imagine if you know that's coming every week... If hopefully for, you know, anybody out there, hopefully you can arrange your working situation so you can be done with your work, whether it's working around your house, 
or working a job, I know this may not work for everybody yet, but gear your life toward keeping the Sabbath. That's one of the most important things you can do, and it really honors God, let me tell you that. But try to just get done with whatever work you have to do, whether it's preparing a meal, uh, you know, cleaning up, finishing your laundry, whatever it is, try to make it so you will not do any work from sundown on Friday till sundown on Saturday. Look at it this way, not of a a rule that, oh, I've got to do this or some burden on me. Think of it as once a week, God gives you a, you've got the creator of the entire universe says, you get to rest. Now, I know thousands of people, hundreds of people that are just running like crazy, running kids here and there, doing all kinds of things, trying to work overtime, you know, just all the running around and, and rat race that we live in, in America today, and maybe wherever you are, and it's really annoying, and it really wears people out. Some people might rest on a Saturday, but it's just, you know, by a fluke, and maybe they'll rest on Sunday, but you get a guarantee from the Lord God of all creation you get to rest and no one can, I mean, if anybody gives you a hard time, you can just tell them, hey, talk to God. You know, I mean, it sounds funny, but seriously, God allows us to have a rest. And I, I just think that's one of the coolest things. If you will actually try it, don't go out and buy things on that day. Don't try to, you know, sell things or buy things or any of that kind of stuff. And, you know, and you'll learn more as you read through the Old Testament. You'll see more and more God doesn't want you, you know, I'll go into more, maybe I'll do a teaching on that or a little, uh, a little video about that too, but um, there's tons of scriptures uh, that talk about the Sabbath, and just I'm just trying to give you a preliminary list of ways to follow God and to keep His commandments. To, you got to start somewhere, and the Sabbath is the easiest way to go if you can organize your life around that, so you just get everything done before sundown Friday night, and then just relax. You know, it doesn't mean you can't eat any food, or, or you know, if you have to cook a piece of toast. I mean, there's people that will take everything you could do for God. Some people will go a hundred miles another direction. So, I mean, they won't even turn on a light switch because, oh my gosh, that's starting, you know, electricity or something like that. I don't think you have to be overboard dramatic and, and overly uh, uh, legalistic about it, but just start out easy. And as time goes on, you may find Okay, I used to do this on the Sabbath, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I know it's changed for me over the last six, seven, eight years. Um, things that I used to do on the Sabbath, now I won't do. But I'm not here to tell you what to do. Just God says rest. You're allowed to rest. And he says do no work. Do no servile work. And don't just do what you want to do on that day. You know, so we'll, we'll get into the scriptures another time. But that's the main thing I would say is to keep the Sabbath. The second thing I would say is as you get into the Torah, start looking into, well, there's no priority to it. Um, I was going to say eat clean food. Now, I'm not talking about washing stuff. I'm talking about you will find that things like pork, ham, bacon, uh, shrimp, you know, a lot of things that come out of the sea that aren't fish, you know, that are like uh, clams and oysters and all that kind of stuff. As far as God's concerned, they are all dirty or unclean foods. He doesn't want you eating that. Like he doesn't want you to go shoot the crow in your backyard that's waking you up and eat that. It's not considered clean. There's a lot of things that people eat nowadays that are not clean. But yet you'll be amazed that most of the food that you and I, especially Americans, I can't speak for other countries, but uh, people that I know, chicken, beef, uh, any kind of lamb, you know, goat, uh, there's a lot of things like that. You don't, I'm not going to give you the full list right now, but it's, you know, I mean, turkeys and stuff like that. You can get turkey bacons and turkey this, that, and the other. And as long as you make sure they have no pig or pork or those kind of things in it, and it's not that hard to find out, um, that's considered clean meat. And you can look into what the clean fish are. The Jewish people have done a great job of making a list of things like that. You can find websites, Jewish websites, that will tell you what's clean and what's not. I'm not talking about kosher, because there's the Jewish version of kosher, and that's not what we're talking about. As a Christian or a follower of Jesus or Yeshua, the Messiah, you know, there's nothing in the written Torah, God's commandments, that commands us to keep the, the kosher the Judaism keeps. 
not trying to offend anybody, but that's that's a different ball game. That's that's where the the religion of Judaism has gone to a an nth degree and gone you know to way more uh, detail than I would ever uh, expect. I don't think God expects us to. You decide for yourself. The main thing is the Bible gives us in Leviticus 11 and other places very specifically, you know, things that you should not eat and things that are okay to eat. Start there and you can figure it out from that, okay? Uh, the next thing I would say is learn about and keep the feasts of the Lord. There's, you know, Passover, Pentecost, unleavened bread, not in order, of course. All right, we'll go in order. Passover, unleavened bread, which is a seven-day feast. There's the feast of first fruits. There's the... Uh, Oh, I just said it. Uh, Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot. Um, that comes later. You can learn all about this in Exodus. Well, actually, correction, Leviticus 23, but Exodus talks about a lot of them too. Um, you'll Again, there's a lot on the internet you can find about the different feasts. At least find out what they are, essentially what they mean, and how you can start observing them as best as possible. You're not going to be sacrificing animals in your backyard Okay, nothing like that. The Bible forbids that. You'll see. But this is just for someone that's getting started. All right? Now, so eating clean foods. Look into that. These are just some basics. We've already covered the Sabbath. Learn about the feasts, you know, and, and when they come, and you can start learning about that. There's more to come. Just knowing about the feasts is one thing, but then you need to know about you know, watching for the new moon so you can tell when the month starts and all that, you'll get that eventually. Um, I would say absolutely you need to read your Bible, especially the Torah. Again, the first five books of Moses, read those, See, just see what's in there and you'll find things. It tells you a lot of different little things that God got kind of specific in some ways, how to treat people, how to treat your neighbor, what to do with your neighbor's you know, if you borrow something from a neighbor or if you go to help a neighbor and something happens, I mean, there's, it's amazing, but he's given some incredible, you know, detail, but not burdensome at all. It's just little clues about how God, you know, different scenarios where God says, this is what I think is fair. Okay. And, and it's cool, but these are coming from God. So if you follow those, you're keeping his commandments. The next thing I would say is, if you get a chance, you know, to help somebody around you, whether you're driving down the street and you see somebody that needs help, if you have the ability to help them, help them. It's really that simple. That's all under the guise or under the heading of love your neighbor as yourself, or as Yeshua put it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Those are both the same exact concept, and it came right out of the Torah. That's where Yeshua got it, where it talks about... Um, loving your neighbor and just, you know, treat people the way you would want to be treated. If you're restrained on the side of the road and it's pouring rain and you don't know how to change the tire or you don't have the tools, but you, you know, somebody's driving along and they know how to do that and they have the time and the ability and they stop and help you, how grateful are you going to be? And if you're the guy that's stopping to help, maybe you don't say anything about God, but maybe that person is going to be, maybe they had just prayed under their breath, God help me and somebody pulls along and helps them. Those kind of things are what God wants us to do. Help each other out. I mean, some people do it without without any inkling of being Christian, uh, religious in any way, and they're just, you know, good, decent people. God marks that, and he, he appreciates that, let me tell you. But if you're trying to keep God's commandments, don't pass up opportunities like that. It doesn't mean you have to shell out tons of your money necessarily. I'm not talking about sending it to every mission field and to everybody that, you know, is calling for uh, for money to help with this, that, and the other. I don't mean that. I'm talking about if it's within your power to help someone, help them. And believe it or not, even if it's on the Sabbath, if you happen to see somebody that needs help, it's okay to do that. Don't stop and go, oh, I would love to help you. Sorry you're stuck in that ditch, but it's the Sabbath. No, that's where God draws the line, and I truly believe that. If you read the Torah and feel differently, go with how it seems to read to you at this point. But this is just what I think I've come to understand, okay? Bottom line is, do all of this stuff not out of rote, just, you know, keeping religious commandments and somehow 
your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds or something like that. Absolutely not. The only way any of us are righteous before God or have any forgiveness for our sins in the past or sins we might commit in five minutes from now are if we turn to God and ask him to forgive us based on what Jesus, Yeshua, did on the cross. Now, if you're someone that doesn't believe in him, I'll get into more detail about that. But he absolutely is the Messiah of God, the Son of God that came, lived a perfect life. He died on the cross, and his death was a specific sacrifice to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind. But, as you've heard from other people, you don't get the, the, the payment applied to your account unless you receive it. You have to accept that, and in some way in your life, at some time, you've got to, you know, just by yourself, talk to God and say, Father, God, I want what Jesus did or what Yeshua did to apply to my sins. Forgive me of my sinful ways. I can't do anything. There's no amount of keeping commandments that is going to bring you salvation. God sent Yeshua. He allowed him to die the way he did. His blood that was spilt was the payment for all of our sins. But think of it this way. If he hadn't done that, nobody in the world would have any way to get back to God. We would be left without any hope, okay? God doesn't want us that way. No one in this world is without hope now. If they would just look to Yeshua and ask, you know, God to forgive you, forgive them based on his, his uh, death on the cross, all right? So, I would say do all these things not out of rote religious duty, but out of your love for God and out of gratitude for Yeshua for what he did on the cross. I mean, Yeshua didn't do this apart from God. God is the Savior. God sent Yeshua to do that. But Yeshua willfully and, and uh, without complaint, without any fight at all, he voluntarily went to the cross. My God, hallelujah. You know, if we didn't have that, there's not hope for any of us. And I'm saying all of this because back some 31 years ago, I was just a dumb kid in college and somebody shared the gospel with me or somehow I was able to read it in the Bible and I learned that Yeshua died for my sins. And I was too young to have done too much, but I knew enough that I had done enough sin that I was in trouble. I was destined for judgment from God and the wages of sin is death. Period. The end. The Bible says it. It's true. Okay. But when I found out Yeshua paid the way for my sins to be forgiven, does it mean I've never committed a sin since? No, absolutely not. But in all these years, the more I go, the more I learn, I've got to hang on to him with all my might. And I love God for allowing that way for me to come to him. And the beauty of when you find out that the Torah is the way God wants you to worship him, the way God wants you to communicate with him and the way God wants you to treat other people, how could you not want to know what the Torah has to say and not want to start keeping it? So that's what this little video is about. Start keeping the Torah. Start keeping God's commandments as best you can. Do not go around stoning anybody. Don't go killing an animal and setting it up on a sacrifice in your backyard. Do the things that you can very easily do. Like I said, if you want to rewind this and go through the, the few steps, this is not the complete only way to live for God. This is just my few minutes of telling you a way that you can uh, keep his commandments. Please give it good consideration. And what where would we be without Yeshua? You know, so because of our gratitude for what he did, love for him, and in turn, we give the glory back to God the Father, and we love God, and that's how we fulfill God's commandments. All right, I'm going to sign off for now. God bless you. I pray you'll take this to heart and start living God's way and keeping the Torah. And whatever you do, return to Yehovah.